everyone and welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to bring to you a recipe called Pizza Pot Pies. I was tagged in this all over Facebook uh, and actually Instagram too. Over the summer it was all over Facebook. People are tagging me. This a really cool recipe. I think this recipe, in, this restaurant in Chicago makes it. It's called Pizza Pot Pie, which basically it's kind of like an upside down pizza when you're making it. Really tasty, really delicious. So I thought I'd put my spin on it, make my version of it and share it with you and teach you how to make it. It's the perfect time of year to make it too, especially since lots of us has, have family coming in from out of town or you're getting together and sometimes it doesn't have to be a really fancy turkey or duck or, or something like that that's gonna please people, make them happy. Sometimes something simple like this, like pizza, who doesn't love pizza? And you can dress it up and kind of make it as fancy as you like. It's a pot pie, it feeds a lot of people it's pretty inexpensive to make and it's very, very delicious, really good. Maybe delicious. I use delicious a lot. Maybe you could post some comments down below and give me some more adjectives, but that's always the first one that comes to mind. We're going to go over the ingredients and then we're going to get started. But before we do that, I'm going to let you know that I did make this pizza dough recipe when I was teaching you how to make my um, homemade New York style pizza. I'll put the link down below because you could use some of those like combinations for the pizzas that I make to incorporate it into this recipe. Um, I'm going to go over quickly how I make the dough. It's really simple. It's a delicious focaccia dough too if you ever want to like take this uh, and make one recipe and use it to make an another recipe. So we're, let's go over the ingredients and then we're going to get started. As far as, as far as the dough goes, pizza dough is super simple to make. In my tabletop mixer I have yeast and water and a little touch of sugar in here that has been sitting for about 15 minutes. And the reason you do that is you want to get the, um, the yeast going and you want it to, once it gets frothy on top, you'll know that the yeast is good and it's active. Sometimes if you have yeast laying around the house for too long in your refrigerator, it might have expired or sometimes if the water wasn't warm enough or it was too cold or too hot or whatever, it might not activate the yeast and you don't want to waste your ingredients. It's better to start with this little batch right here and if it doesn't work, you start all over. But anyway, I have some lukewarm water in here, some yeast and a little bit of sugar. In my bowl over here, I have some all-purpose flour, some bread flour, a little bit of salt, and then we're also going to add some olive oil and a little bit more water. I have my dough hook attachment on, and I'm just going to let it start going and add the dry ingredients in here with the water and a little bit of olive oil and let it mix on here and knead in the, in the mixer for about eight minutes until it's nice and like um, tacky or something like that. Then we'll go over the, next, the rest of these ingredients. Okay, so you just want to make sure that once the dough is done kneading in the machine, or if you're doing it by hand, go ahead and do it by hand. You're going to put it in a bowl that's greased up a little bit with some olive oil. Okay, and you just want to cover it with some plastic wrap and put it in the warmest place of your house um, just to rise until it's doubled in size. Depending on the season, <clears throat> Depending on the season, that could take anywhere between one and a half to two hours. As soon as it's doubled up in size, it's going to be ready to use. So I have a batch right here that I made actually a day ago. The best thing about this dough is that you can make it two days in advance and it actually tastes better the longer it kind of ferments in the refrigerator. It creates more of those, light, those air bubbles that make the dough really nice and light. Kind of like a really good pizza if you've ever had in New York. The dough is crispy, but it's light, has lots of those air bubbles. It gets that um, when you don't use it right away. So you can use it right away, it'll be good, but it's better if once the dough rises for that hour and a half or two hours, you just put it in a container and put it in your refrigerator and use it either the next day or the day after that. Your, your dough will be just beautiful. So this is the dough. Now we're going to go over the rest of the ingredients that we're going to need. And we're going to need my homemade pizza sauce, which is just some canned um, crushed tomatoes. I actually found uh, cans of pureed unseasoned tomatoes and I use that so that way I don't have to puree it in the blender. And then I always have tomato paste in my freezer because if you get a can of tomato paste, usually any recipe that you're using it in, um, it doesn't call for the whole can. So what I do is I always use whatever I'm needing for the recipe and then I take the rest and I put it in some plastic wrap and I keep it in flat little packs in my freezer and then just take them out and use them whenever I need to and it works good in this recipe. 
So we have tomato paste, toma crushed tomatoes. We have some sugar, some dried oregano, some basil, and some crushed red pepper flakes. And I'm also going to season it with a little bit of salt. I'm just going to mix it up. If you are using crushed tomatoes or any other kind of tomatoes, like a whole canned tomato, just pop this in your blender and just blend it until it's really nice and smooth. And just like that, voila, your um, pizza sauce is ready. Now, the sky's the limit as to what it is that you can add to this. I like to make mine with mushrooms. I like to use uh, leftover chicken. If you have chicken breast that's grilled, that you have some leftovers, you could use that. If you're making this after Thanksgiving, this is a great way to utilize that turkey, those turkey leftovers that you have. Just shred up some chicken and also pop this in here. If you have some meatballs, which I do, I'll go get them out of my fridge in just a second. I forgot to take those out. You can use meatballs in this or any kind of um, ground beef. If you have leftover um, meat sauce, you know, I've, I have made a really basic, easy meat sauce on here before. You can just use that, may just make it really nice and thick, and you could use a couple of tablespoons in each pizza pot pie bowl. And um, I told you I have some mushrooms. Last thing that you need, the most important thing, is slices of mozzarella cheese. Now, I buy a big block of cheese um, at Costco. I buy it from there, but buy it from wherever you want. And, and then I just hand slice it myself. You're gonna, I'm making four pizza pot pies here, so I'm going to need about 10 or so slices. Um, the shredded version won't work as well because when you go to invert it, it won't be as neat and nice um, as you're going to see in a little bit when it's done. So you're going to need some pizza slices, a little bit of salt, pepper, and some olive oil. That's all you need. You could also use pesto sauce if you wanted to instead of the tomato sauce. You get my picture. There's so many different ways to make it. But we're going to move on now to the next step, which is to um, make a few sections with this uh, dough right here. This dough makes a lot of pizza pot pies. Actually, it makes 12. We're only making four. And I'm going to use the leftover dough to make frozen some pizzas. pizzas. And if you want to see how I do that, it's really simple. Post a comment down below, and I'll do a separate video and teach you how to do that right there. So I have my beautiful dough over here. This is about three pounds. You're going to need one portion of it that measures about one pound. I never really weigh it. You could if you want to, but I just cut it into three portions as equal as I can get it. And I'm just going to take these two portions and save them for later on because I'm going to make those frozen pizzas for my son who's away in college. But even if you don't have a son that's away in college, you can make these for yourself because who doesn't like a pizza ready to go in the oven in the freezer whenever you don't have time to cook? I'm going to leave that on the side. And then I'm going to cut this portion right here into four. So I'll cut it in half, then each one in half. And then I'm just going to form little round circles. Now, an important tip to know, um, somebody once asked me this in the comment section, that when they were working with their dough, whether they're making pizza or anything else, that it kind of shrinks back together when you're trying to stretch it. That happens when the dough is cold. So the more closer you have it to room temperature, the easier it's going to be to stretch it out into the size and shape that you want it to be. So that's something that's worth noting. So I'll work with two cups at a time. I like to use these big uh, coffee mugs or tea mugs, whatever you use them for. It makes it easy when we're going to take it out. And I'm going to show you what that's going to be later on. You really don't know right now, but we're going to invert it over a plate and then it's going to be uh, it's going to be, look like a pizza. These are nice. If you don't have these, you can use ramekins or any kind of bowl that you like. I just feel like this is a really nice size. So what you want to do is brush them with some olive oil. Inside and outside about halfway around the top because that's where the dough is kind of, kind of stick all around it. And you want to make sure you brush it really well so that way it um, releases easily. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our mozzarella layers inside the cups. And you can cut them to kind of make it fit just the way you need it to. And then you want to do what would be like your toppings. So I'm going to put some mushrooms in two of these.
put some mushrooms, and then I'm going to put some of these chopped up meatballs in another. I think four will be fine. And then you want to top off with some sauce. Can you tell how good this is going to be already? Look at that. And then you just want to take your dough and stretch it out so that way it overlaps the top of the cup. Kind of hugs it like that and seals it. Can you see these air bubbles? Those are going to create a beautiful light pizza crust. And then once you have that going, you want to brush the tops of the dough with some olive oil and then season it with your favorite herbs or spices. You can just do some oregano, you can do some black pepper. Definitely some salt. And I'm going to get my oregano, sprinkle some oregano on these, finish uh, my other two right here, and then we're going to get ready to pop these in the oven. So you want your oven to be preheated at 400 degrees, and then you're going to cook them until the tops of the bread are really nice and golden, and I'll show you what that looks like when they come out. But you want to lay them in a pan. You want to put them in a pan that's lined with some parchment paper. That just makes for easy cleanup. If you don't have parchment paper, feel free to line it with foil. That works too. But I'm going to finish doing this, and then I'm going to pop them into my preheated oven uh, that's at 400 degrees, and I'll show you what they look like when they come out. So my pizza papayas just now, this second, came out of the oven. They took about 25, 30 minutes, closer to 30 minutes than, the, than 25. But you want to keep an eye on them, and when they're nice and puffy and golden like that, and the dough looks completely ready, that's how you know that they're done. Now you want to take them while they're still pretty hot, and you want to turn them upside down onto a bowl, and just use a knife to go all around, and just like that, the magic happens. Look at this. Oh my God, I can't wait to eat this. This is, it's hot for sure, but it's perfection. Look at that, beautiful. It looks like a pizza bowl, which is what you want it to be. I'm not gonna cut into it just yet. I think I'll just take a piece of bread. It smells so good. Look at the bread. Let me show you what I was talking about. I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Guys, that dough is so good. Look at this, the dough is really nice and light. You see all these bubbles that it's made? It's nice and light, it's not gonna be dense and heavy. It's just the way you want it to be. Trust me, serve this at your next get together, surprise people. If they think that they're coming over for some like, I don't know, roast beef or rack of lamb or something like that, make this instead. Everyone is gonna be so happy. I'm gonna put the link to this recipe in the description box down below. Make sure you get it. Let me know how you made it. What variations did you uh, make of this, of this recipe? I'd love to hear it. Share pictures with me on Instagram, you guys. I'm on there too. Like this video, thumbs it up, show me some love. Subscribe if you haven't already. And make this recipe and let me know how you like it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.